Ladies and gentlemen, Kage Kaze here to bring you this special edition of Diablo Digest. Today we're going to be covering what happened on the BlizzCon floor in regards to Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls. Now, this is not going to be a full discussion piece. This is just going to be what we've heard about from Blizzard, what they did in the panel. Not going to do a massive discussion set just yet. But first, before I talk about what was covered at the panel, let me talk about what wasn't covered. Two things not covered. One, PvP. It was asked about in the Q&A afterwards, and there was pretty much nothing there, which kind of came as a surprise considering a lot of PvP strings have been found in the Reaper of Souls beta. Maybe we'll see some of that tomorrow. The next thing is that nothing was mentioned on difficulty. I find this a little bit interesting because there has been a announcement from Blizzard, there's an official announcement page that lists what's going on with difficulty. They are essentially removing difficulty as we know it. So you no longer get the normal nightmare hell inferno. Those are gone. Those have been replaced with a completely different set of difficulties known as normal, hard, expert, master, and then finally, Torment. So it is mimicking the console version in that this will scale the difficulty up. Unfortunately, as far as I can tell, this announcement doesn't show what's going to be happening with monster levels. And if you look very closely at one of the screenshots shown at the panel, it looks like instead of showing the monster power in parentheses by the difficulty, it's showing your character level. So it looks like the theory that the monsters are going to scale to your level may be more true than we thought. So let's talk about what was announced at the panel and what we can expect. So first they talked about Adventure Mode and what this was, what it was intended to do. It was meant to take the advantage of Diablo's randomization system. So as many people have noticed, Diablo wasn't exactly as random as they had hoped. A lot of the outside areas were pretty linear, had the very, a very similar structure. So this is meant to take advantage of the random generator uh, to its fullest. So in Act 5, you're going to get a lot of good randomization, and then in the Nephilim Rifts, you're going to get a lot of randomization there. The Everything leading up to Act 5, so 1 through 4, shouldn't be changed that much, but there will be plenty of stuff that you can that will take advantage of it. Now, they've also made it so that you no longer have the linear difficulty progression, as I mentioned. Uh, they did mention that, but they didn't give us, again, details on what that will do to monster levels and how that will affect item level drops, because as we know, going into highest level monster power on Inferno... Uh, kind of guarantees the, the drops that you'll get because they'll always drop of eye level 60 to 63 or so. All waypoints will be unlocked. That was confirmed. They showed us a bounty map that shows all of the waypoints available to you. Again, this kind of goes right into the bounty system. Bounties will give you kind of random quests that you can do. And on the map will be little icons like exclamation points, kind of like in WoW, that will show you where these bounties are located. The bounty system is looking really cool. I mean, there's always obviously been a lot of strings on it. So to give you an idea of what kind of bounties to expect, they listed in the panel specifically a kill a boss bounty. So go, you have to go in, find a specific boss. Uh, a bounty to complete an event. So the random events that spawned out there, such as the uh, Jar of Souls, you would might have to go and find that and complete it. Uh, kill a unique monster is another bounty. Now this one's a little bit different. The ex example that they used at the panel was Mira Amon, the blacksmith's wife, and they mentioned, well, she's normally in one location every time, but as part of this bounty mode, you might have to go and find her in the world because she will be in a, ron uh, a random spawn location now. And then, of course, lastly, they have a Clara Dungeon bounty, which they refer to as the Den of Evil for Diablo 3. You basically have to go into the dungeon and you have to clear out all the monsters in it. Now this also can tie into the Nephilim Rifts. As you're playing the game, you're going to get these rewards, and one of these rewards might be these Nephilim Orbs that you can open the Rifts for. They are completely random dungeons, random tile sets, uh, random monsters, random affixes, everything. Even random density. They mentioned that they will be playing with density randomization for this. So you might run into a dungeon that has a ton of monsters in it. You might run into one that has a few monsters in it, but they still might be difficult. So it, these dungeons, these rifts, will have anywhere between 1 to 10 levels uh, of, of depth. And each time you change levels, it will randomize the tile set. So just because you start off in the cathedral, when you leave the exit to level 1, level 2 might be Whimsyshire. You never know. In fact, there's a great picture out there that shows Act 3 and 4 monsters 
it, with Whimsy Shire background, but it's also got rain and effects like that. So not only are the maps going to be randomization, we've got random weather effects. These Nephilim rifts are designed to be more fun and interesting. So you may have heard me mention before about Nephilim orbs and them giving power buffs. This is going to tie directly to the Nephilim rifts. They're going to give you massive buffs in these rifts that you can randomly find. And some of them are going to be insanely overpowered, and they're designed to be that way. Again, specific example at the panel was a chain lightning effect that it just hovers around you and it one-shots everything. And it really one-shot even the toughest of monsters when this was on you. So these Nephilim rifts are meant to just really throw everything just into a blender, and, and you'll never know what to expect. That was mostly it as far as the the content part of it and the, I suppose, the core gameplay experience of Reaper of Souls. Again, not a lot coming out today. This was really a one-hour panel. This is kind of what I feared. The today's panel was more of an announcement thing, so the details will probably come tomorrow in tomorrow's hour-long panel. A couple of things they did go over that I thought were kind of cool is some of the monster interactions they were showing, such as a shaman monster that could summon minions, and then he throws those minions minions at you. Aside from that, there was another monster that could pick up his underlings and turn him into a summoner. And that, So you've got monster interaction going across the board. A summoner that throws his minions, those minions can then become a summoner with the help of another monster, and then that summoner will summon even more of the minions, and it just you can find yourself in a massive ball of hurt there if you're not careful. And they did show these wonderful new realm walkers, which are these, they look like a portal in the ground, when you approach them, they come out and they're this giant beast that you defeat, and when you kill it, it becomes the portal again, and you can actually walk through the portal and explore the area that it leaves behind. And so there's some really nice uh, world-changing monsters and, and set pieces going on here, which look great. Lastly, they showed off something that some of you may remember. If you remember when Diablo 3 was first announced, they were showing these death animations of the Siegebreaker Beast picking a hero up and just eating his head or decapitating him in some way. They don't have it as so grandiose, or they might, I can't say for sure yet, but there was a demon dog that once it killed the player, it turned around and actually took a leak on your corpse to just add insult to injury. Now that's a minor thing, but there's something about that that just seems interesting and it just it makes sense that you have this monster that just wants to show you who's boss. Okay, at the uh, end here, uh, we talked. they had a Q&A session. I mentioned already that PvP was dismissed. Uh, no one asked anything on difficulty, and it was not mentioned at the panel. Uh, ladders were... At, they questioned them about ladders, but they were very tight-lipped. So tomorrow, it is hinted at heavily that tomorrow they'll talk about ladders. So it wasn't dismissed like PvP was, uh, but uh, the ladders should show up. Again, randomization should mostly hit on Act 5 and in the Nephilim Rifts. There are no plans at all for an offline mode that was requested since the auction house is gone. They're more than likely not going to touch that at all. Uh, trading options, since people are asking about that, they do not have a set trading system in yet. So some of us have talked about things like that, where having an option to let you trade with other players. No news on that yet. They are still iterating, and they don't know yet. So anything like a browsable stash tab... No idea. Uh, a good question was about bosses that spawn randomly. And this ties in again to the Nephilim Rifts. Bosses kind of sit in their own boss room. They never go out and seek you out or anything like that. And they want to know, well, what about bosses randomly roaming uh, the world now that we have Adventure Mode? And they said that's what the Rifts are for. When you're in the Rift, you might spawn a boss, and that boss might spawn on top of you while you're already fighting some other monster. So they won't be pathing the dungeon, but they will randomly spawn, and you might have to be careful about that. So that is really all there is right now as far as this goes. So I'm looking forward to tomorrow and seeing what kind of new information we're going to get out of Blizzard. So I'll wait until then and we'll do an after the BlizzCon show once I've got all the Reaper of Souls information to kind of talk, theory craft, and really go over what's uh, looking really good and what kind of game-changing stuff there is coming. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming by this BlizzCon report. I'll see you next time.